to the people of St. Martin, to our residents and to our guests. September 6, 2017 will be forever etched in the memories of each and every person that was here on our island one year ago. Together, we shared the life-changing experience of the most devastated hurricane to ever hit St. Martin. Hurricane Irma did not discriminate. With winds over 185 miles per hour, this horrible storm left a path of destruction on St. Martin and many of our neighboring islands across the Caribbean region. On behalf of the government of St. Martin, I dedicate this moment of silence to all those who lost their lives during the passing of Hurricane Irma and wish their family and friends much strength on this national day of reflection. To all that survived, but lost their homes, their businesses, or their livelihoods. To the people of St. Martin who continue to struggle with the trauma and pain that Hurricane Irma brought, I stand with you in solidarity and encourage you to remain steadfast as we build back our lives and our country. Together, we are resilient people, and together, we will overcome. On this national day of reflection, when the memories come back to us of the storm and its aftermath, the devastation, chaos, and violence that Hurricane Irma initiated, I would like to express my gratitude to each and everyone who chose to help, who chose to take responsibility, and who chose to start working immediately on the recovery of our island. On behalf of the government of St. Martin, I would especially like to thank the brave emergency responders of the Emergency Operations Center, all civil servants, the Dutch military forces, the government of the Netherlands, Aruba and Curaçao, the numerous international agencies, local and international NGOs, the district community councils, and also the many individual unsung heroes who all contributed in one way or another in the aftermath of Hurricane Irma. We are forever grateful to you. The devastation caused by Hurricane Irma created unprecedented challenges for all of us, but it also brought new opportunities for our country. As a young nation, we are at a unique moment in history we have the opportunity right now to decide the future of our island and to choose how we want to build a country that meets not just our desires, but the needs of our children and their children. To guide our nation to a more resilient and sustainable future, the government of St. Martin has developed a national recovery and resilience plan. With the support of Parliament as representatives of the people, this plan sets an ambitious agenda for the future of our island. This is our roadmap to restore, secure, and strengthen the well-being of the people of St. Martin. We want to become a more resilient community with a healthy living environment without a smoking dump in the middle of Phillipsburg. We plan to develop a resilient, growing, and more diversified economy that can withstand any type of disaster. As a country in the kingdom, devastated by one of the strongest hurricanes ever recorded, the government of St. Martin agreed to the preconditions set by the Dutch government for financial support to our recovery efforts. Subsequently, the Dutch government contracted the World Bank to manage a 580 million US dollar trust fund for the recovery and resilience of St. Martin. The World Bank manages these funds that are provided to St. Martin as grants, not as loans. We set the goals of our country, we choose where the funding goes, and we work with the World Bank in ensuring that this funding is allocated in an effective, sustainable, and transparent manner. Some choose to debate whether the construction with the World Bank is fair. Some decide to complain that the process is slow. And others try to spread fake news and make false promises about alternative options. 
As Prime Minister, I choose differently. This government chooses differently. Together, we choose to commit to the people of St. Martin to work as hard as we can to continue our recovery process with the support that is available from the Netherlands and the World Bank. We will use the funding of the Netherlands and the expertise of the World Bank to address some of our biggest challenges, to work on a permanent solution for the dump, to strengthen our government and to build homes for our people. Until now, three grant agreements have been concluded with the World Bank. A total amount of 102.7 million US dollars has been allocated to projects that serve to address some of the most important needs of the people of St. Martin. With this money, we will, for example, repair emergency shelters, support the repairs of severely damaged houses, strengthen our disaster preparedness, and continue the income support and training program that is helping many unemployed and underemployed workers. With the start of this first trust fund projects, we have achieved an important step in our recovery process. Throughout this process, proper planning and preparation remain paramount to ensure that the limited available funding is spent in a sustainable and effective manner. As Prime Minister, I continue to ask for patience as we use this opportunity to rebuild our country more sustainable. While sometimes frustrating, building back sustainable requires us taking the necessary time to ensure that our recovery is of such quality that it benefits the people of St. Martin for years to come. On this National Day of Reflection, I want to remind each and every one of you that we are in this together. The success of the recovery process depends on all of us. Through faith and hard work, St. Martin will rise again. Thank you. May God bless St. Martin Land and keep us safe.